Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Total War Rome 2 in our Empire Divided Palmyra series. We are just marauding across the, <laughs> the northern edge of Africa with two armies, in fact. And uh, this one just finished the Siege of Garama. Kind of a disappointingly simple battle, honestly. But uh, I'm going to, as soon as I can, we're going to recruit a champion, probably in Garama, that I can then use to be training this army even faster, give them some more experience, because we need them um, trained up rapidly. But uh, let's see what else I might be able to do before I end this turn. I don't think there's a whole lot left for me to do. Do you still have movement points? I think you do. Yeah, you do. You haven't moved at all. You haven't moved since the last turn. So we are about to go to war with a couple of different factions at once, I think. Yes, I know, I'm trespassing. Alright, so this spy... See, I could go ahead and attack this army. This is Zenobia. She would wipe the floor with this army. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having... Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't I shouldn't be timid. I'm, I'm trying to be... I'm not really a min-max player when it comes to strategy games. I'm really not, but I'm trying to think in terms of, well, let me take the city while the army's away. I'm trying to minimize my losses, and then that way I hold the city if they come back and try and attack it. But I think it might actually be a good tactical decision, since we have Zenobia here and all these advanced troops, to go ahead and hit them, hit the city and the army together. So we'll do that soon. Let me take another look around. Okay, so let's go ahead and end the turn. I have mostly finished queuing up upgrades. Interesting. Interesting. Thessalonica is under siege by Gallic Rome. But I've, yeah, anyway, anyway I've, mo oh, hello, what was that? It looked like someone, looked like uh, Aurelian's Rome. No, we're not going to make a military alliance with you Roman pretenders. Hispania Citerior had, ooh, okay, lots of interesting army movements. We're going to have to pause as this next turn begins and kind of see who is heading our way. Particularly, it looks like Aurelian might be making a play for somewhere in Turkey. Ooh, more of the Sibylline books. These are tough times and the people are gripped by fear. The Senate urges you to look for answers in the mystical Sibylline books. What is it that you seek to achieve above all else in the following years? I've been saying prosperity so far. Uh, let's go ahead and say victory. Let's do that. <laughs> I said that very excited. Let's do victory. How about that? Um, where, where is that Roman Navy? I know I saw you. Yeah, there is a Roman army. Hmm. I'll tell you what then. Hmm. Well, see, these guys are still healing up, which is annoying. I've been waiting for them to heal for the longest freaking time. I feel like that navy is taking an unusually long amount of time to heal. But, alright, so, first things first. Oh, yeah, it's like, let's go ahead and upgrade Garama, definitely. Uh, I... Yeah, we'll convert that to a consecrated ground, sure. But now I definitely need to recruit a new champion, finally. Let's see. Septimus Ninius Labanus, Septimus Vesuvius Cerealis, or Gnaeus Cestius Cornison. Let's go with the guy whose middle name is Vesuvius. I am Rome's champion. Okay, so we will cue that guy. Oh, hello. I just realized. Could I ambush the crap out of you? Oh, I totally wish I could. I wonder what they're doing. All right, so he is not coming for me. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to move this guy a little farther along. They've taken Carthage. This army is probably not going to be able to take Carthage on its own. Carthage better have its own battle map. It, it better have a unique city map. I'm going to be so mad if I march on Carthage and it doesn't look like Carthage. I know in the standard Rome 2 campaign, it of course has its own city map. But for whatever reason right now... Okay, hang on. For whatever reason, um, some cities in the campaign so far have not actually had their own unique maps, and it's been very frustrating. All right, so Medea, you don't control a lot of territory. I could go ahead and take some territory from you. You guys are a satrapy of the Sassanids, however, so... Ooh, so is Armenia. Didn't catch that. Son of a bitch. If we go to war with these guys that we're looking at attacking, that means war with the Sassanids.
Maybe I need to back off for now. Because I don't know that I'm quite ready. Oh man, I know that's a plot twist. I, I'm, I know, I'm sorry. I hate it too. I'm surprised. But... War with the Sassanids, when we haven't had war with them yet, and they seem relatively stable at the moment. Maybe famous last words, who knows. Let's see, can I get you all the way up to... Yes, I can. War with the Sassanids would be bad. What I might do is go ahead and bring these armies back down here and finish taking control of these settlements. Fully control southern Egypt and Nubia. Those regions, basically. Let's see, where can I move you? Garama is doing okay public order-wise. I could move you out, honestly. Oh, no, I couldn't. No, we definitely want to have that army in Garama. It is, three, or it is 275 AD... Leptis Magna. I'm not going to invest any money in Leptis Magna at the moment. I know there are a few places that I need to set up. Some, um... Oh, words, come to me. What am I thinking? Uh, there, there are some places where I definitely need to have some additional defenses. But because I don't have a lot of defenses in that area right now, I don't want to spend money on a city that I then see conquered almost immediately. Which would be more than a little obnoxious. So we're going to avoid that. However, I do want to take a look over here and see... Yep, Serene, I can go ahead and upgrade here. And that needs to be a next level city. See, that's the downside of, of spending all the money that I have on these upgrades. I mean, the cities are definitely getting upgraded. I mean, they're... It, it helps economically, but we're just... We're not able to get to the army just yet. Now, thankfully, most of the new... Uh, megalopolises are, or the megapolis are almost done. Thank God. It's only taken forever in a day. But yeah, so I think what we're going to do is bring these armies back down and try and take a lot of this territory as much as, as much as possible. And also that gives us the advantage of an additional army down here. I guess one thing I can do, let's see if we can go ahead and recruit our new general. Mm, not just yet. I want to wait until it's not someone that is limited to those families. Also, I think we're about to get our sanitation bonus through research. I think those armies of Aurelians just pulled back. If they did, that's fantastic. I was a little nervous about that. That's another thing we can do with the forces that we're pulling back into our territory. On the Turkish Peninsula, specifically. We can make sure that Aurelian doesn't get any funny ideas. Communal Rubbish Collection. You have completed a technological advancement, giving you an advantage over your rivals. Trade with Nabatea is no longer possible. We had a patrician level up, and it's Easter. Nice. So extra public order per turn and growth per turn in Antioch, which, again, we're about to do away with that. So we, you won't see as many Christian messages um, in the coming turns. But uh, All right, so now we have extra sanitation for all regions. That's quite nice. I'm going to go ahead and research Rome Restored. We are not going to actually have Rome Restored for a while. But that'll give us an additional 1,000 wealth per turn if we control Rome. It only takes five turns. By researching it, though, we will finish this tier and get governance level two, which is an additional 5% to our tax rate, which is nice. And then we'll go in and do some additional military research because we need to. As a matter of fact, um, let's see. Yeah, these. this is probably what we're going to look at next, is this next tier of army so that we can have better military buildings, and, by extension, better military units. It is time to have some improvements in that regard. Now, the Legion of the Empress, you can surely do better. You, you've, I'm, I'm good on cavalry, I guess. I, maybe I'm down one Palmarine Lenciari? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's, I'll, I'll train that. And that way the Legion of the Empress is fleshed out. Alright, Medea. Okay, before any more time goes by, we're going to start a new army in Alexandria. Or are we going to do, do it in Antioch? Yeah, let's do it in Antioch. Let's see. Who are our current generals? Oh, also we need to adopt that general, don't we? We have general in Caesarea. Yep. Let's go ahead and bring him into the family. It's going to cost a good amount of money. We can... Secure a promotion for him, though. Which is good for the influence of the party. We are still beloved. Ooh, we have a 6%... Interesting! We actually have a 6% uh, 
on account of the Latin families um, being disloyal, we have a 6% risk of secession, of civil war. Hmm. This is part of the new power and politics update. I'm not as familiar with it. I've never had a civil war happen since uh, this system was implemented, so I'm kind of excited about it, to tell you the truth. All right. What else do we need to do here? We've got these Peltists, Auxiliary Spear Infantry. See, now we have the access to Palmarine Cohors, though, and I kind of just want to discard these guys and replace them with Palmarine Cohors. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to upgrade this army. This is going to be a bit of a downgrade at first, because those were trained units, but... These are Palmarine Spearmen. These are Palmarine Cohors. Look at the melee attack difference. There's, a, there's less of a charge bonus, but their base morale is higher, and their melee attack is hugely better. So we're already going to have a better army there. It's going to take a little bit to train up, because we're training two armies at once in that province right now. Also, I have access to a new spy. So we're going to need to mess with our friends south of Egypt. <laughs> friends, quote-unquote. So let's... Alia Buteo, you are our new spy. Recruit. And speaking of new units, let's also get our champion here. Have him shack up <laughs> with this army here. And he can start training. Meanwhile, looks like you are going to be ready to keep moving on Hedrumentum. Can you attack Hedrumentum? Not just yet, but you will be able to soon. All right, let's put them back in ambush mode. And we're going to take Hedrumentum right out from under Hispania Soteria's noses very soon. And we'll control most of that province. This army is still hanging out in Palmyra. We want them there. <laughs> we definitely do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and give this, this, if we upgrade this ability, we'll get a nice growth bonus here for Antioch. And that can't be all bad. All right, Salamis, I can upgrade the farm, and they don't really need a farm upgrade. And it would hurt Squalor, but I'm going to do it anyway, because it's something that I can afford for now. Anything else that I can do at the moment? I need to break down a bunch of stuff. Aguila can do a new Mithraic community, so I'm going to do that. We're definitely courting that religion still. And we're going to be able to move this army next turn. Let us end the turn. I'm really curious about what he's doing. I guess he's bringing his armies back to try and defend Thessalonica, which makes sense. It's probably his last major capital. Wow, look at what's going on here. Holy crap. There are so many armies gathered outside of Thessalonica. Okay, and it looks like Gallic Rome has taken control of Thessalonica. Banditry, missing taxes. Libya, bandits have stolen the taxes. Armed thugs have attacked an official cart on its way to the treasury. This province provides no wealth this month. That sucks. Consulting the Sibylline books, the keepers of the Sibylline books were ordered to find a prophecy to help you achieve victory. At the proper time, they descended into the temple's inner chambers and began searching the old texts. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so let's see. We're going to go ahead and train up. Well, hang on. I am going to stay true to my word. There are still cities, major cities, in fact, which could benefit. Yeah, especially if I... Yeah, extra public order per turn for all provinces. Let's go ahead and do that. Also, Alia Capitolina, I can upgrade their Mithraic community for nothing whatsoever. And I can go ahead and dismantle the Christian buildings if I wanted to. So let's do that, because I'm a jerk. Nyko Medea, I'd probably benefit from upgrading that, but that's a lot of money right now, so before I commit to spending that much money there, hold that thought, we're going to finish dismantling the rest of Christianity. Uh, it's like, like I said a couple of episodes back, it's like Eternal Empire all over again. It's amazing. All right, military camp, yep. Uh, field engineers workshop, yep. We're going to need to be training more armies up. I know there's been, like, a long pause here in recruitment. Let's see, Aguila has a Procurator's Villa. Does it need a Procurator's Villa? There's already a Viles Urbani here. I kind of... It lowers banditry. 
and Libya is where we had... Yeah, that's where we had some issues. Ironically, this is not my worst banditry province. Hmm. I don't know. Part of me wants to dismantle this and put something else there, but I'll, I'll leave it. Cyrene... Uh, we can probably do a military wharf there of some kind. Food, we're okay, but let's go ahead and do a... F well, no. Hold that thought. Let's do a Shrine of Naboo in Garama. And that's most of my money. Okay, now I think we can move. Yes, we can. So Champion is now with this army. We're going to go ahead and start moving towards Sidimus. Slowly but surely. Kind of creeping forward. And I think this army might be ready, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they are. Let's take Hedge. Wait, wait, hang on. Yeah, they've got a navy in the port. That's it. Hedge Momentum. Let's go ahead and just auto-resolve this. Well, what have they got in the port? They've got a garrison army. Classes 2 Rapox. Rapex or rap Rapex? I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and... Mm, yeah, I'm just going to auto-resolve this one. We'll say uh, aggressive stance so we have a more robust remaining force. Occupy Hedromentum. Our general has leveled up. We do need to do some additional adopting as well. I think I'll look at that in the next turn. Let's see. Virtuous. Additional zeal and public order for the province, which would be nice. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were upgrading him to be a lawkeeper, weren't we? Yeah, let's go ahead and... Let's lower uh, construction costs. Having Zenobias chosen in Africa could really help us build Africa up quickly. All right, let's dismantle that. And we're going to take a look around. We do need to get that new army training. I know I, I brought that up. I acted like I was about to recruit, but I'm not ready to just yet. I think Zenobia is ready to move, though. She is. Right, let's move her down to Antioch. I'm kind of tempted to leave this army up here. I think Zenobia can probably take these guys mostly on her own. I don't know that I need another army, especially since I'm about to train another one. Maybe I'll leave this army up here to help defend. Kind of makes more sense. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and put that spy in counterintelligence. This army's training for a bit. Oh yeah, that's right. You got promoted as well. So, let's give you the tax rate boost. And next turn, you will bring in a little bit more money from that area. You're still healing. I don't know why you're taking so damn long. Now, this spy, I need you to go south. I need you to keep an eye on our soon-to-be new enemies. And let's end the turn. I'm really curious as to what's going on around Thessalonica. Maybe... I am certain that no, we're... no, no non-aggression pact for you. Um, maybe these guys, I need to see if they're allied with... Oh, hello. Are you really going to do this? Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, so they brought the army down from Carthage and a navy in. And now they're going to try and wipe out Zenobia's Chosen with a superior force. We have the city... This could be interesting. We don't have a choice. We have to fight it. It's not like I can just like say, huh, I don't know. Um, tell you what, let's go ahead and fight this on the battlefield. The game is saying I have a terrible chance of winning. I did kind of get ambitious with Zenobia's Chosen. I've just been riding up and taking territory from them. But the, the motivation there being they were sieging Carthage, and I was kind of hoping that they would wear their army down a little bit and that I could take territory from them while they were distracted. And it's totally working because I still have a stronger army to the south it is still taking territory away from them. But because we are spread thin, as I've been saying, we're now paying the price a little bit. All right, so... Oh, man, you guys are... <laughs> worthless. Um, Crap. But well, let's just put you here. Because I don't want any units landing here, so I'd rather have the boats land on... These boats land on shore. Okay, well... This is going to be interesting. 
They're going to have a navy trying to land here. I want to try basically and defend from this position. Okay, so what we're going to do, the Palmarine Palace Guard is the general. Let's see. This is going to be hard. This is going to be really hard. I wish I could move them. Wait. Wait a minute. I, I just want to get them in that gap. As you command. Come on, let me get them in there. I mean, that's a little better. Like so. That's not great, though. I prefer that they were more like... Proud Romans all. Hmm. Maybe if I have two. I don't like that idea, though. I'd rather have one unit set up. Oh, also, that reminds me. You have defensive Testudo, right? Oh, Testudo. Never mind. Because it's a Testudo, they can't actually form a spear line like we've seen in previous defensive battles. This could be fun. We'll see. We could have an interesting defense on our hands here. I don't like that positioning. I really hate it. I hate it with a passion. The only way around it... Well, no, they, they can trample right through this. So they can... This is a road going both directions. I need to hold this spot, period. Um, thankfully, our Palmarine cohorts are our strongest units. So they are our last hope. All right, now, we could have some units coming in here. These guys, again, are not going to be very strong at all. <laughs> there's almost no point bringing them on, on shore, but the reason I want to bring them on shore is that having the boats in position might help prevent anyone else from landing here, and we want to do that. Let's see. Where should this last unit spearman be? I suppose, yeah, where I was trying to put them would be best. Not a huge fan. <laughs> Not a huge fan of any of this. But it is what it is. Let's just have these units. This is literally... Th these are four units right here. <laughs> it's four different units. Uh, we're just going to have you, I guess, backing those guys up. We still have archers that are completely ready to go. These guys just got worn down by the previous battle and hadn't recovered yet. So this is probably one of the most aggressive moves that the AI has made against me yet for the entire series. Kind of caught me off guard, but I'm liking it. So let's put some archers there, and we do need to use flaming shot. We're gonna take. We're gonna turn off skirmish mode, which is a little risky. But I want them to stand their ground while the lines are holding. Okay, that's not even a little bit what I want you to do. No. Game. Is it that hard? I want them to stand... <sighs> fine. Stand there. That's fine. Whatever. Total War gets really finicky when you're dealing with... Um... You probably need to stand back a little bit, don't you? When you're dealing with this, you know... Obviously, when you're dealing with building placement and such, it gets really obnoxious. Alright, so... Now, the Palmarine Palace Guard, I want to have him kind of 
I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. We'll have him facing the shore just in case anyone does try to come up on shore. But we also want to have the general in the middle so he can reinforce where the most help is needed and he can use abilities and such to keep everyone happy. Now we have several cavalry units, several cavalry units, which we are going to try to use to maximum effectiveness. We're going to start them hidden in the woods there. They will probably not stay hidden, but if I am lucky, I may be able to use them for a surprise. If I'm not, then I can pull them around and use them elsewhere. So the last question is the swordsman. I really think we have a chance here if I am smart with these defenses. I'm not sure which direction they're going to attack from. I know that they're going to bring in a pretty substantial navy coming this way, so we probably would do well to have... Can I have swordsmen, like, standing here? No, I can't. I was kind of hoping... Yeah, see... See, part of me almost wants to move these units forward. Egyptian infantry. Jupiter gives us strength. Hmm. Spear infantry at your command. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'm actually gonna move these guys forward a little bit. There's that. Egyptian infantry. Okay, so I want to have these lines as the most reinforced because I feel like that's where the main attack force is going to ride in. But again, we have the option. This is going to be one heck of a finale too because this next episode is going to be the battle and then we're taking a bit of a break from the series. So hopefully this will go well. Let's see. Yeah, see, the main army is probably going to get... The main army is probably going to discover the cavalry there. That sucks, but it is what it is. All right, and then the other question is these two guys, where did they go? I suppose I can have them here. Archer. Brave Romans to a man. All right, this is going to be one hell of a fight. And I'm going to fight it in the next episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're at the 28 minute mark, but I will I'll go ahead. I can't, I can't help but laugh. I know I shouldn't. You hate me. You're yelling. You're either laughing or you're genuinely angry, but I do have to stop the episode here. You know, you, you record on a schedule and you only have so much time to record and so much time to spend on other life matters. So that's just, that's just the way it goes. Uh, but I did want to get the battle set up as a little bit of a teaser. Um, Hopefully not too much torture before uh, tomorrow's episode. For those of you watching it live, for those of you not watching it live, it's waiting for you. And those of you, those of us that are watching it live or waiting for the next episode, not knowing what's going to happen yet, hate you. But it's okay. We say it with love. If that possibly makes sense. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at noon Eastern time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you tomorrow um, or in the next episode if you're, again, just watching these at some point in the distant future, or near future, whatever, where we will um, see how this battle goes. Uh, cross fingers. This is going to be an interesting one. See you next time.